I know you're, I, listen, this is cool. It's I mean, cool. I've, I've, I've had Krista Kelly in here singing Sandy, Sandy Patty songs. I've had people do, do opera, or sort of operatic type things in here. I've had hillbilly music in here. I've had people do all sorts of things. Aren't you glad you Christian, know me, Christian, Christian underground, Tom. Aren't you glad you know me, Tim? Aren't you glad you know me? I mean, I'm, this is going to be cool. This is, this is really, really exciting. I mean, this when I was in stuff. the world, I didn't even, like, understand underground music now you're putting christian onto the label well don't 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 advertise your ignorance Tim. i mean really i mean that's <laughs> it, it's it's the hippest music there is you know, okay really is. so um, 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 am i gonna I, like this well I, I don't think that's the point is it i mean i mean uh, well mark, in, mark, in my place it is <laughs> mark mark Planger is is one of the farthest out people in the body type. so is chris chris this is tim hi chris hey, how you doing? chris is an artist and uh, Mark's, uh, as you know, a musician. Um, really, one of the truly the farthest out people in the body of Christ today. Mm -hmm. And uh, to know them and to listen to them talk and to listen to their music is to is to have your mind like stretched. You know, is to say, okay, this is what God is doing. It's a very interesting kind of stuff. If you don't but like despite, it, well, that's well, cool. Despite the style, <laughs> believe. Despite, you know, I mean? <laughs> despite the style, it's going to point us to Jesus. Oh, sure, everything. Okay, everything. Okay, well then, that's that's good. That right? gives me something. Right? That gives yeah. me something to look forward to. Okay. Then. Okay. Okay. I mean, really, Chris. I mean, okay. okay. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Um, you okay with your coffee and stuff? Yeah, it's fine, thanks. Okay. Have, uh, I, we've got some music that's a little different yeah. that we're doing here tonight. It's called Christian Underground Music. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've never really heard it, but, oh. you know, I, I, I hope it doesn't, like, scary out have you ever heard of Christian uh, Underground in music? fact that's why i'm here tonight i spoke with tom green the other day and oh. he said that mark was going to be playing and um i'm very familiar with mark's music i i like it a lot so i said hey i gotta come down to his place like, well, well what is it what what am i expecting here what what hmm. style i mean what does it compare to well really no one but the best way to describe it might be um his influence are laurie anderson and the residents he doesn't sound like them but if you know their music you can see how he's influenced by them i mean is it is it am i looking at new wave or am i well, looking at what, what is the style like electronic industrial or avant-garde pop so in that vein so you're oh, in for a treat <laughs> so you've heard him before and you think it's okay yeah i Okay. ordered several other tapes and okay. I enjoy his music very much. Well, that's good. Well, I'm I'm always as long as as long as it's going to point us to the Lord, I'm open to any style. I mean, there's there's music that that all of us, you know, one particular way or another aren't going to like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not particularly fond of country western music, mm -hmm. but I know that there are Christians in this world that like Christian country western style music. Right. And uh, I think I think we're going to be in for a treat tonight. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of this underground stuff? No, I haven't. But right now I have a more personal concern. Uh -oh. Could I see you for a minute? Sure. Please? Sure. <laughs> I just wondered if you had had an opportunity to uh, talk to your accountant today, like you had. Tom. Well, I'm. You didn't promise me yeah, today. Well, I just. Yes. Wanted. Yes. Well, I I did have the opportunity to mention it to him, and uh, what he said to me was, Tim, let me take another look at your books and see what we can do. And I said, Well, I'd really like to do it if we can if we can afford it and I'd explained to him that well he knew that I was planning on adding you know trying to get some more people or whatever because I didn't uh, at honest I didn't think that you really wanted to work full-time at that point but now with everything with Jerry that, right. uh, I would it, really like to yeah. I mean it's not that I'd like to but I right. I feel that if I can right. that will help to pick up some of the slack well he so. should have an answer for me next well, maybe even today. Okay. So that way we can go from there. Right. I'd okay. appreciate anything. I mean, whatever you yeah. can do. I know you can't make me any promises, but... Okay, well, you know, I hope, I hope that you can come back with me. A great thing 
about uh, some of the days. Maybe I don't get a lot of mail right here at his place, but some of my friends at CTV get letters, and the people that write to them mention his place, and I get them anyway, so I'm not standing here without a letter, which I think is pretty great, because I don't like doing the program without letters. So anyway, a friend of mine, Joseph Overend, who's a great guy, and I'll mention his name because I love him. He's a beautiful brother from down at Castle Shannon Presbyterian. He's on the board of the Light of Life mission. Really a go-getter for the Lord. Wrote a nice letter to my friend Russ Bixler, who's the president of CTV, and you see him sometimes on that program getting together. Told him how much he appreciated the TV station, the great things TV40 is doing, and he put in a little P.S., and I want to thank you for it personally, Joe, especially coming in during this time when we're having the uh, God Bless the Buck special series of broadcasts. It's encouraging to know, Joe, that you are thinking about us. It says, P.S., here's a plug for his place to get more airtime. Which, that's nice. One thing I'm glad I get so many letters of people who say, I wish the broadcast was longer. I wish it was an hour. I wish you were on more times. And that shows that either uh, we never get long enough time to finish our subject, or you just want more. And I'm glad if you want more. If you want more, write to us at his place, CTV, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148. Dennis! 1499. That's 15148. 1499. Don't forget to write to us. If you're writing to anybody at CTV and you have a comment about his place, let them know that you like it, okay? Thanks for uh, being here with me. Let's get back to the program. I've taken much too much time. God bless the box. Okay. <laughs> Did you oh, did Jerry on. hear anything yet? I know you I know he sent out a bunch of resumes. He's gotten a lot of responses back saying, you know, we'll keep it on file. He's gotten a couple that have said we don't have any need for you right now. He's even had the experience get this one. I think he's gonna go into um some line of liaison between professionals and employees because somebody sent the resume back to him. Now how's that for an insult? <laughs> did you ever hear of a personnel department doing anything like Sending that? Sending a resume back? Yeah. So he was a little bit upset but, by that, but weird. yeah, really. I, I, I appreciate unusual. you guys meeting me here. You're going to be on the show on Monday. On light music, my show, you know, on Monday. Yeah. And I really appreciate you guys. We need there's we only have like 10 minutes on light music, so I've got to really distill down something we can just talk about really quickly. So I need to sort of brainstorm with you guys. Underground, Christian underground. Like, what, what do you see that means? <laughs> I'd say non-commercial or undiscovered. That's that's really yeah. That's, in your mind, yeah. that's it. Yeah. See, there's a difference between alternative music, underground music, and mainstream music. Mainstream music's out there. It's already been tested. It's already generic. It's already it's safe. Okay. Um, alternative music is something that's a little more on the experimental end. I'm sure you might have something a little more different to say about that. But underground, to me, uh, is for me the Christian underground is basically made up of people who say, you know what, I don't need a record deal. You know what I mean? I'm going to record my own music. It's different than in the 70s, because in the 80s, um, people said, wait a second, I could buy my own four-track, I could record my own music, I could take and have mail-order business, and I can get this stuff out all over the world. You know, it's uh, the same mentality with the underground presses. Yeah. You know? I know, yeah. speaking for myself, the activists... The activists, yeah. 15 countries. Wow. Well, right. Well, there's also sometimes where a band may have been given God, by God, something to say that... The mainstream uh, record companies don't want to tackle yet. There are issues they don't want to talk about yet. So the alternative underground artists created their own form to be able to talk about these things that they thought they were vital. Now, do, do you, I mean, I, 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 I first became aware of you in, as, as Gadget, which is the, which is the uh, <laughs> you're pouring ketchup in your coffee. That's, that must be really underground. Uh, are you, uh, um, like Gadget was like this industrial noise band right um did you have a place to play there or with a band like that no, that, no. that wasn't so much made for something that you would see live it yeah. was more of a recorded sort of thing where you'd be creating an atmosphere not so much it would only be uh, definable as music if you define music as organized sound yeah. so you're using sound and non-traditional instruments uh, such as pi uh, pots pots and pans pipes uh feedback Anything bowling balls and dumps to create more of a to create more of a mood or rhythm, rhythm and noise, and uh, mm -hmm. so you know I, I, what I did is I read psalms over all this, 
so that you get this sort of odd contrast. So you'd have sounds that maybe may have been traditionally ugly, sounds of steel mills or something like that, but then you'd have the beautiful contrast of a psalm. Hmm. So and then the next thing I heard it was crazed bunnies, and and some of the untouched by human hands <laughs> sound. You know, that sort of sounds like very very uh, antiseptic. Very. Uh, um, would you disagree with that? Or? Um, no, that's true. It, it, we, it was odd because we were sort of a punk band, but then it was, some people had called us the hardcore Depeche Mode <laughs> because we were one of the only punk bands actually using a drum machine and a bass synthesizer, so we kind of had an odd reputation. <laughs> it's fun. Now, the stuff you do now, is that, is it, uh, how would you define, I haven't heard your stuff recently, what do you do? Um, it, I basically would call it maybe avant-garde pop music or electronic music uh, with an industrial flavor to it. Lyrically? Lyrically, uh... I try and expand the range. Sometimes I like to use a lot of satire, uh, but in order to get a message across. So you, there are certain songs that you can listen to on, on two levels. Uh, on the surface level, you would have you know, a song about something that you would make you laugh. But if you go down deeper, you'll find out that there's, there's actually a message there. Yes. So you're using satire as a tool to get people's attention and then make them think about something. Or then there's also more of a direct approach, which I like to use. Um, Chris and I were talking before he came over about the difference between propaganda and art. Um, now, a, a message song has a message. Is that propaganda right. or, or uh... hmm. I think uh, I think propaganda would be more wanting to create a change in the listener without the listener knowing it. Manipu huh. More of a manipulation factor rather than uh, presenting an idea saying, hey, this is what I think. Do you agree? You can accept this or not. Yeah. Huh. You, you know, I, I, I know I'm just skipping around on the subject here, but Mark, I've always wanted to ask you, um, how does a guy whose name sounds Planjuit <laughs> end up having it pronounced Planjay? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's French. You ask my parents. <laughs> it, it's just regular French pronunciation of right, your name? Right. Planjay. Okay, I, I don't know why <laughs> that fascinated me so much. Uh, I, okay, I think there's some stuff we can talk about on my on my show Monday. I think that that's okay. we can distill that. Chris, maybe we need to um, we need to talk about this. Um, this kind of music doesn't have an audience. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've been doing it for five years, so <laughs> I, I've had an audience. And, Are there places uh, to play other than Cornerstone? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Non-Christian clubs. I've, right. I've performed to some artsy sort of clubs in Los Angeles, and uh, we're going to be doing some dates in Pittsburgh. Right. And uh, right. uh, August 24th, we'll be at the Artery doing a multimedia show. I like... I can't do it here, but I'd like I use uh, slides and film uh, during the performance, kind of get the message across. Drill at Cornerstone. Yeah, yeah, it went really well at Cornerstone. Really? And then uh, possibly at the Artery, we'll be using some people in costume and other wow. things like that. I'll have to go there. That's great. <laughs> don't, you, don't you have something coming up real quick? Uh, yeah, uh, with 35 little ducks in a basket from Great North band. Canton, <laughs> we're going to be doing a, a date at our studio, at Art Attack Studios. Art Attack Studios. Art Attack Studios. Which is in Youngstown, right? Youngstown, Youngstown Ohio. Yeah. At, uh, at the studio, July 7, 27. July 27, we'll be doing a date together. I'll have to try to get up there. I, I appreciate you so Now, as an artist, Chris, um, do you ever are you ever tempted to do propaganda art as opposed to just absolutely not as a matter of fact when i first became a christian uh all my emphasis was based on propaganda because i was excited because i found jesus and and i wanted the whole world to know the only problem is uh there's let me put it to you this way art's like this it's it's like a fire all right there's the world is living in a cave all right they've been in solid darkness they've been in there all their lives okay if we walk in with a flashlight turn it right on in the front of their face they're going to be blinded by the light they're going to be re they're going to stand back like this yeah. i mean try it on yourself but if you take that fire take it 100 yards maybe 100 feet out away from the entrance of the cave light it they'll see it and they'll walk towards it slowly and as they walk towards it they'll understand wait a minute it's this is i can i can see mm -hmm. rather than someone saying you're blind They'll say, I can see better as I, as I approach a light. And, and, and as they get closer to the flame, they'll see that there's someone sitting there waiting for them. I say, wait, I, I've been lonely. I could, I could talk to somebody. You know what I mean? I could have a good time. And then they'll smell the food. And they'll say, you know, I'm hungry. Yeah. I want to eat. And they'll sit next to you by the fire and eat with you and be your friend rather than running from the fire or running straight into it and burning up. Yeah. See, I, I think that we missed the point that Jesus spent 30 years working as a carpenter and his next door neighbors went to hell because he didn't 
say, follow me, because it wasn't time. You know, there's too much emphasis placed on blatant propaganda evangelism, and I think we're supposed to, to die and let Jesus live through us. I think that's really the fire they should see. So uh, it, when, when you do a piece of art, now the, I haven't seen that, my, all I've, I've seen a lot of your cartoons. Mm. I've only seen a few of your actual major mm. art pieces, uh, the Batman series, uh, which yeah. you have to talk about sometime. But I mean, uh, the, uh, when you're doing that, you're not, uh, uh, do you approach it as, uh, I'm going to glorify God by this piece, or, do, or I'm going to do this piece the best I can? How, how do you approach it? Okay. Um, every single person has gifts and abilities. It's uh, up to us to recognize the source. That's really our goal in life, to recognize the giver of the gift, and to give him glory, to turn around and thank him and say, you know what, I want to take and I want to use this gift until I can't use it in this fashion anymore, and then I know that you're going to multiply it hundredfold. Mm -hmm. You know, and he will, and he does it all the time, you know. And if you lift up Christ in all areas of your life, without a propaganda mode, he will draw all men unto him. Hmm. You know, that's a promise. Very you interesting. Know. I think an awful lot of Christian music and Christian art, Christian theater, Christian TV is just straight... How's it going? What's happening? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. You're looking pretty, uh, pretty dapper today. Like, uh, well, I try to just, keep my, uh, just keep trying to keep myself together. You know. Not too dapper. Look at the way. What? You, look at how you're buttoned. <laughs> Did you leave. You left the house without seeing Kath today, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Okay, it's been one of those days. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass you. So, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Oh, sure, anytime. No problem. Uh, How are you doing? Good, Have I good. missed the show yet? Uh, no, no, not yet. When does it start? <laughs> um, which show? This one? This one? They, are, they, are, they, they should be Love beginning a song. His care. We'll be here every day in his place. His place. That nagging little feeling in the pit of my gut Like everything inside is slowly opening up I look in the mirror and what do I see? There's a hole in my body, what is happening to me? Nothing does the trick Fashion trends, self-help plans Vegas for free And a well-balanced diet of MTV I've got to fill the hole up And tape it closed And irrigate my soul with a rubber hose Filter out the meaningless Take in what I Autumn breeze is emptiness enough to bring me to my knees. No, I turn up the stereo, drink a little liquor, and hope that the hole won't get any bigger. I've got to fill the hole up and take it close, then irrigate my soul with a rubber hose. Filter out the meaning. Taking what I need Bring out all the junk So my spirit can breathe 
deeper and deeper sinks the cold hollow hole past the flesh and blood and into the soul crumbling away at the core of my spirit i've got to find someone who knows how to fix it i've got to fill the hole then tape it closed then irrigate my soul with the I think, I think Tom really liked it. Yeah, I, think, I'll yeah. say. I, think I was around. standing over here kind of clapping, and then I kind of looked around, and I thought, well, I guess people don't clap to underground music, so I kind of walked away. You have to get under the counter to clap. Oh, or something. I don't underground. know. I don't know. Underground. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that was terrible, <laughs> terrible. That was, good. That was very good. For one person like that to play both sides mm -hmm. and sing. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're empty, you need God to fill you up. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's presented in a different sort of way. Yeah. Trying to just present things in a different way it comes kind of a more more entertainment in some ways but uh just it's kind of my way kind of the way god has given me to present things it's sort of episcopalian yes. <laughs> what you say yeah, yeah, we're talking about that uh you know, you know what my question was to you do you feel sometimes as though you're dealing with a post-christian society post-christian yeah society that has already rejected the lord and so you're having to kind of come around the side yeah mm -hmm. yeah because you're mm -hmm. you've got people that are very negative towards christianity and so i'm trying to catch them with sound with a lot of people will listen to music just because they like the music and they won't even pay attention to the lyrics they'll, they'll learn them later mm -hmm. so i'm trying to trying to do music that people catch and will listen to in like an alternative scene because in more of an alternative underground scene you've got a lot of different forms of thought in the mm -hmm. we're talking in the non-christian scene mm -hmm. so trying to pick up on that because because they're into these sort of thought patterns Nihilism. a lot of them have totally negative attitudes towards christianity so um i think those are the people i'm really trying to talk to do you yeah. get negativity from people in the art scene because your music sort of outspokenly christian and has you know those kind of values to it um Actually, no, because they they enjoy the music. Uh, one of the clubs I performed in in L.A. called the Lhasa Club. Uh, a lot of the people there did not accept Christianity at all, but they accepted me and uh, and my music because they enjoyed what I was doing. And so I think that was that was quite a witness in a way. I, I'm wondering. Um let me change the subject a second, Chris, because uh, I remember the activist and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Safe Comics and the whole comic strip thing. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to, 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 to catch a parallel there between, between uh, catch, capturing people's, people's, people's attention with, uh, with interesting sounding music and also comic strip stuff. Do you have that same kind of idea? You're doing traditional messages, but, but uh, in a little different way? Actually, uh, the activist stuff is still falls... Um, in the line of having a built-in audience and basically a Christian audience. Is this your stuff here, Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. Oh, he's cool. Yeah. That's actually real old. It was done in 1981. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at an antique reprint. Wow. But yeah. Nice. Duty and everybody. Anyhow, right? what was your question? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Tom. Shut up, man. Shut up. <laughs> oh, gosh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, uh, do, do you feel that the messages you're doing are traditional messages done in different ways? But you see, okay. Uh, it depends on who you're talking to. You got to know your audience. If I'm doing, um, my, my partner at Art Attack Studio, my, my third partner, actually my second partner, Gary Smith, okay, who co-founded Art Attack Studios with me. Um, he and I are working on a, on a superhero strip called Misfits that is designed not for the Christian market, okay? Uh, we know that we're going to have a non-Christian audience. Uh, it's theologically accurate, though, and there's like a million different things happening. You've got superhero science fiction, everything else. We realize what our market is. We know what it what it's going to take to take and get into that market to make a living from it. Um, the activist 
cartoons in the activist, however, were done purely for a Christian audience. Yeah. You know, and so they have to talk directly to those people. Mm -hmm. It's like as a Christian band, you're either going to play and face the fact that you're not going to, unbelievers aren't going to come to churches to take and hear you play. You should go out to the club. It's the old thing of finding the audience and designing something for them. And then going to them to going give it to them. them. That's right. Yeah. Really yeah, everybody thinks of missionary work as something overseas. But I can see where it could be a, a real good evangelistic tool in, you know, in, in the world. I could see it, it being, uh, you know, just like you said, where they've got a booking downtown in a, in a secular uh, place. Right. Um, we went down today and met with a person who handles the bookings, and it's booked for August. Like, not really sure about the date. I could, you know, contact them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the latter part of August, but mm -hmm. I think their music is unique, uh, especially in this area, because you don't find a lot of Christians doing this music, just the secular. So I was rather shocked when I came across his music in the first place to find out, wait a minute, there's a Christian doing industrial music? <laughs> so. well, the scripture tells us uh, that think on things whatever are pure and lovely and honorable and a good report, report, but it doesn't say what style right, exactly. <laughs> that is. Uh -huh. And it was, I, was really, I was really impressed to hear the song, mm -hmm. not that the, the style of music appeals to me, but the words were a great evangelistic tool. There's a hole in, in my body mm -hmm. that I can't fill with MTV, I can't fill it with all the joys of the world, I can't fill it with all this other stuff. There's only one way that it can be filled, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a great message. I mean, that's like saying Jesus is Lord, and the only way you're going to get it filled is by this, and, it, and I just think it's good. I think right. it's good that there's a way that people can be reached through every angle, through every style of music. Well, like I said before, just because he doesn't, you know, say the name Jesus in every other sense doesn't mean he's not uplifting the Lord, like you said.